Hey everybody, this is Loli Jane, animal communicator and energy healer from animals-speak.com and you're listening to Loli Jane Animal Communication Podcast, the show that promises to open your mind and heart to the amazing world of animal communication, energy healing, and what I like to call interspecies therapy. Thanks for joining me. Curious about animal communication? Today, let me show you how animal communication can help with behavioral, emotional, and training issues. We'll discuss how animal communication can help in all type of behavioral issues, including emotional issues such as anxiety, depression, or fear, training issues such as aggressiveness, overprotectiveness, and even attacking, plus a bonus discussion on animals mirroring their humans. I hope this podcast will give you a better understanding of what makes your animals tick. First, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a professional certified animal communicator and pranic healer. I offer remote and in-person animal communication and energy healing for all kinds of animal issues, as well as providing animal communication workshops and mentoring. If you listen to episodes one and two, you'll know that animal communication is simply telepathy. Telepathy can be done remotely and uses thoughts, words, images, sounds, smells, and even feelings, anything to do with the five senses. Animal telepathy is not woo-woo, it's not magic, and it's not psychic. It is a primary language of animals, and all humans have this innate ability, too, because we are part of the animal kingdom. Animal communicators are always asked if animals have emotions. The answer is a resounding yes. Animals feel all the same emotions of humans, whether it is grief and sadness or anger and irritability, anxiety or feelings of loneliness. They feel it all just like we do. So how can animal communication help with your animal's behavioral issues? Well, when an animal does a certain behavior, there is always a reason. The behaviors are not random. They know exactly what they're doing. They are trying to show or tell you something. Animals are highly intelligent beings and know exactly what they're doing. Sometimes... Animals are having personal issues and will exhibit certain behaviors, and other times animals are trying to show or tell you something about what you need to know for yourself or other family members to work on. When I communicate with animals directly, I will find out what they are trying to show or tell you and if it's their issue or someone else's. Let's talk about certain animal behaviors more in detail. Some behaviors are emotional in nature. Some examples are anxiety, depression or sadness, separation anxiety, fears and phobias, trauma, stress, isolation, lethargy, grief over loss, changes in appetite, not eating, Eating disorders under or overeating or eating non-food substances like wood or poop, self-mutilation, or horse and equine behaviors such as walking in circles, weaving, full rejection, sexual behavior problems, cribbing, pawing, problems with trailering, and many others. Other behavioral issues appear to be more related to training and obedience. Some common training and obedience issues are excessive barking or vocalizations, aggression toward animals, aggression toward humans, attacking, biting others, chewing objects, kicking, clawing, digging, scratching, the list goes on and on. Potty training, peeing and pooping in the house, not using the litter box, there are many examples. Let's compare animal communication with obedience training. Animal behaviors can be tricky and sometimes call for obedience training, although obedience training can be helpful in terms of reprogramming behaviors 
It uses a cookie cutter approach and does not address your animal's individuality, underlying issues, or root causes of your animal's unwanted behaviors. The causes of specific animal behaviors are not always the same, even with the same breed of animal. As a pet parent or caretaker, it is important to address the root cause of correcting unwanted animal behaviors. Otherwise, you are just putting a Band-Aid on the behavioral issue. Obedience training works under the assumption that it is the animal's issue. In some instances, behavioral or training issues are not your animal's problem at all. They may be mirroring others' behaviors, and as I mentioned, Animal communication is not cookie cutter and the causes of behavioral issues vary greatly from animal to animal. Obedience training does not address when the animal is trying to show you someone else's behavior. With animal communication, you will typically only need one session to address the animal's behavioral issue. You will save both time and money and avoid costly, lengthy pet training. Lastly, it works on all animal species, including birds, fish, reptiles, horses, dogs, cats, and even animals in zoos and sanctuaries. Have you ever tried obedience training with a cat or a bird? It's not a likely solution. Let's talk about what makes animal communication so great. In fact, I'll give you eight reasons. Number one, animal communication is a direct communication with your animal using telepathy. It is not a psychic guess. It's an actual two-way conversation, like when I'm talking directly to you. Number two, animal communication addresses the actual root causes, like we mentioned, of behaviors and pinpoints exactly what your animal is trying to show or tell you. Number three, animal communication works on an individual case-by-case basis. It is not cookie cutter or one size fits all, and neither is your beloved animal and what they are trying to show or tell you, including mirroring and past life causes. Number four, another great thing about animal communication is that it can be done remotely. I can talk to animals remotely anywhere in the world, just like the world is connected digitally using satellites. When you text or call on your mobile phone, Your phone is pinging the satellites and tuning into the frequency of who you are trying to connect with. Telepathy works the same way, tuning into the frequency of the animal I will be talking to. If you ever want to learn this, I teach animal communication training workshops. Visit my website training schedule at animals-speak.com, animals-speak.com. Number five, animal communication saves money. It is much more affordable than weekly obedience training sessions, and it may even be possible to rectify your animal's behavioral issue in one session. Number six, animal communication saves time. Since time is a hot commodity these days and none of us have enough of it, animal communication will typically only take about one to one and a half hours of your valuable time by phone or in person. Instead of taking up all of your time with weekly obedience training sessions. And number seven, animal communicators like myself can provide valuable details to veterinarians, including when the behavior started, how long they have felt this way, what changed, exactly how they are feeling emotionally and physically when doing the behaviors and if there is an underlying physical cause. And lastly, number eight, animal communication is a great place to start before an energy healing session. It gives me much more insight and details of what I need to heal. I use a different healing technique for emotional causes versus physical causes. For example, depression can have a physical cause or an emotional cause where different chakras are involved. I offer remote pranic healing for animals and their humans for both behavioral, emotional, and physical issues. So let's go a little deeper and explore animal behavioral issues. It is important that when asking about behaviors, we don't use labels or make judgments. Sometimes 
We like to label things, especially with acronyms used by the pharmaceutical and medical industry, such as ADHD or PTSD. If a client contacts me for a session and says, for example, my cat has anxiety or PTSD, I will always ask the client to give me the behaviors that look like anxiety or PTSD. This way, I am not making an assumption or a judgment about what the issue actually is. I don't ask the animal why they have anxiety or PTSD. Instead, I will ask the animal about the specific behaviors. In reality, the issue may be completely different than what you think it is. It's the behaviors that are important and finding out who they belong to. As we talked about earlier, the behaviors might be related to someone else. Animals come into our lives to help us with our lessons. Sometimes the issue is not theirs, but rather they are trying to show or tell you or a family member something about themselves and what they need to work on. This is what we call mirroring. This is not always the case, of course, but animal mirroring is very common. Just like your children or spouse will mirror you, so will your animals. The animals want you to see what you need to work on, like holding up a mirror. Haven't you ever seen a person with an animal in tow that has some of the same issues? Animals can mirror our behaviors, emotional states, and even physical illness or disease. Let me tell you a story about a cat with an impacted bowel. So I had a client with a cat with an impacted bowel, and... Um, they said they had done everything possible to take care of the issue. And they said they had gone to the vet, gotten colonics, all of that stuff. So the cat proceeded to tell me it's not their issue and it has to do with uh, its person and it has to do with the female family lineage and being angry at the mother. And that, you know, was very odd for an animal to tell me that, especially with a physical condition like this that you would swear it's theirs. Um, And I talked to the person later, and she said she had not told me before anything, but she told me, yes, not only do I have an impact about, but my mother does also, and her mother, and they're all angry at their mothers. And the cat told me it had to do with the female family lineage of the house. So I did a healing session with the person, you know, on forgiveness, and she called me three weeks later, and she goes, you're not going to believe this, but the cat no longer has the impacted bell. It's gone, like completely gone. And then she was also talking to her mother. She's like, my mom is talking to her mom and so on and so forth. And everybody's impacted bell was gone. It's astounding how much they can mirror you. Like, and this goes for, for behaviors. I gave you a physical example, but behaviors, everything. So if your animal, if the animal tells me they don't know why they're feeling a certain way, I will then go down the path of mirroring. Clearly, they are trying to show or tell you something. It might be a person in the household or an animal caretaker, for example, in foster situations, zoos, or rescue sanctuaries. They can also mirror their caretakers. I can find out if they are willing to drop the behavior, but only if the person being mirrored acknowledges the problem and is willing to work on themselves. And let me tell you, they will not, not drop the behavior until you hear them loud and clear and you agree, at least in your thoughts, to begin working on yourself. They will not be willing to let go of the behavior. So it's very important to take a look at yourself. Uh, It's an amazing, amazing gift of service that our soul animals provide to us in seeing ourselves as we really are. What a gift. If the person works on themselves and moves past their issues, the behaviors can mysteriously disappear without any obedience or behavioral training whatsoever. As you can see, none of this is ever brought up in obedience training. Animal communication is much more of a deep dive getting to the heart of the root of the issues. Behaviors might also be related to past lives. These are promises made from past lives. 
in other lifetimes with you, they may feel they have failed you in some way. So make promises that in the next lifetime, they will do better. Let us take an overprotective dog for an example that lunges at people and others when dogs are walking and when the person is walking the dog. It might be from another incarnation with you and your beloved soul animal. Let's say, for example, that you passed away first and got harmed or killed. The dog or whatever animal it was in that lifetime may have had terrible guilt that they didn't protect you enough. So when they pass, they make a promise to themselves. He or she may make a promise that in the next lifetime with you, they will do a much better job to protect you from harm. And so in this lifetime, they may become way overprotective. And you don't know why. And no amount of training can take care of this since it goes deep into other lifetimes. I do past life regression with you and your animal to heal the traumas and promises made from other lifetimes and make sure it is not brought forward into the present lifetime. Sometimes your animal acts a certain way to alert you and remind you of another pet that has passed on, but is still very much with you in spirit. I had a client with a dog that would constantly lay upside down with its legs up in the air like it was dying. And she was very concerned, of course, as we all would be. But when I talked to the animal, the dog told me it was a reminder from their cat who had already passed to say hello from spirit that the cat was very much around and they were communicating with each other through telepathy. So it was just a little reminder from the dog that the cat is still around. Amazing, huh? Behaviors can also be related to showing you that they are reincarnated as your current animal. They may have been reincarnated from a previous pet you have had in this lifetime. That was the case with my animal. So I tell this in some of my YouTube videos and... I had um, a mini American Eskimo who I was absolutely in love with, my soul animal, and very difficult passing, and I was just heartbroken. This is before I was an animal communicator. I was completely and utterly heartbroken. And my friends like, do you want a cat? And I said, no, I never want another animal as long as I live. And about a month later, I decided, okay, well, maybe I'll get a kitten, So I started looking through the uh, adoption ads, and I went through like a hundred of them, and I literally picked one kitten, and I'm like, that one. So I went to get this kitten. I was instantly in love with this kitten, who, by the way, was not available to be adopted for another uh, two weeks, I think. Um, So um, I got the kitten, and this cat, by the way, was born on the same day as my dog, but I never knew this until later. And I couldn't figure out these odd behaviors that my cat was trying to show me because I thought it had to do, of course, with the cat. So the cat would pee around the litter box, never go in it. I tried everything. I took it to the vet. I tried, uh, you know, different litters. I tried just everything under the sun and it kept doing it. And then my cat would also run out in the yard and run these big circles around the yard. Well, when I had my dog, Frosty, the mini American Eskimo, um, he used to run these big circles around in the snow where we lived. And it was like this happiest moment ever. Like you could see the joy on his face. And my cat was trying to show me that it was reincarnated from Frosty. But I had no idea because it wasn't all the behaviors. It was just a couple of things. And the litter box had to do with, I got, I had another cat and I got Frosty at the same time. And Frosty learned how to be potty trained, but he would watch the cat who would go in the litter box. So he would pee a circle around the litter box instead of in the litter box. Well, guess what? My cat was trying to show me that he was reincarnated by these two things. Remember, it wasn't everything, so I never got it. 
I never got it until I became an animal communicator, and I was told this, and it blew my mind. And then I found out that the cat was born on the literal, literal same day. So what an amazing gift. My soul animal decided to return to me that same day. That is just beautiful. So that is just an example. So usually it'll be one or two personality traits that are uncanny resemblance to the other animal that has already passed. We will do an in-depth podcast on soul animals and past lives and reincarnation. So be sure to subscribe to my podcast. So let's say it is their issue and none of the other scenarios applies. Then I talk to the animal about the behaviors and how they are feeling emotionally and physically when they are doing them. This way... I can get a real insight into exactly how they are feeling. I then ask lots of detailed questions and why they are feeling this way, and most importantly, what they need from their person to stop doing these behaviors. With animals, it's a negotiation. If they are heard and acknowledged and given what they need from their pet parent or caretaker, they will respond very quickly. But here is the most important thing is human training, not animal training. That's right, I said it, human training. There are two very important premises here. First, you must understand that your animals are telepathic and can hear your thoughts. That's right, they can hear what you are saying, so you cannot lie to an animal. Since they can hear you, if you lie to them verbally, they will feel betrayed. And you do not want them to feel betrayed because that's the opposite thing that you want your animal to feel trust, not betrayal from from its person. So learn to speak the truth. It's a great lesson for us to speak to other humans as well. Second, they don't understand the word don't or not or the negative of something. So if you are yelling at your animal or even thinking, stop doing something or such and such, guess what? They are going to do that very thing. Instead, you want to visualize and think and speak of what you want. You can do this in images. You can send them images of what you want. You can close your eyes, imagine an image of the scenario that you want not what you don't want. You have to focus on it, close your eyes, send an image. Your animal will get the image because that's part of telepathy. And then if you verbalize something, make sure you verbalize it in a way that it is what you want. Here is a story for you. So early on when I was an animal communicator in training, uh, we had just gotten done doing a, a workshop. And after the workshop, I decided to take a bike ride. So I was riding my bike, and all of a sudden, this cat, like, ran across my path and was about to be run over, was about to run into a busy road. And I had just learned that concept. So I got off the bike as quickly as I saw. I I could see, like, way up ahead this was happening. So I threw my bike down, closed my eyes, and I literally visualized this cat backing up and going back into the woods away from the car. Because if I was to visualize or scream, don't go in the, don't go in the traffic, guess what would happen? The opposite of what I want. So I close my eyes and with all my will and might, I visualize this cat going the opposite direction. And do you know what happened after that? It was astounding to me. This cat literally walked in reverse, like when you put your car in reverse. I've never seen an animal walk in reverse. This cat stopped dead in its tracks and walked in reverse and went into the woods. And I was so, like, amazed by that. It's just astounding, like, what you can do if you understand that concept. So just be patient with yourself because it it takes a little bit of mind retraining. But when you get it right, you will see quick, miraculous results and behavior changes. Now, let's talk about animal employment. That's right, I said animal employment. It's important for animals to have a job. Okay, so maybe they don't earn money, 
But just like humans, animals need to feel a sense of purpose in their life. And they like having a job or responsibility, just like us. Sometimes jobs are assigned by their person. Other times they have assigned themselves a job based on how they are helping you with your lessons. Sometimes they don't have a job and feel no real sense of purpose. I can ask the animal if they have a job and if they do, how they like their job. If they don't have a job, hate their jobs, or feel burdened by it, I can ask them what they would like their job to be. I can also ask the animals, if you could pick any job in the world, what would it be? And you get amazing answers from that. And sometimes they're simple. Sometimes the jobs are not like what you would think, complicated. Um, You know, like I've had animals say, I want to bring happiness to the house, or I want to be the bringer of joy. And so you can assign the the animal um, a job as a bringer of joy to, to make it's humans laugh or lighten up a little bit. And that's a great job for an animal. I also find out their sole purpose in this incarnation and see if it aligns with their current job. Here are some examples of successful behavior change with animal communication. For the purpose of privacy, I am using the animal's initial only. Testimonial one. Thanks, Loli, with my energetic yet uncertain 19-month-old rescue dog. I have learned so much and developed a much deeper understanding of T's personality and needs. First thing was that I needed to change the name of the animal the shelter gave me. And then I needed to work with him on a more gentle and understanding basis so we could become a team. I am so grateful because just after a couple of weeks, T has become happier and his potty training issues have disappeared. He is proudly walking by my side. He has expressed what he thought his sole purpose was to Loli, and now I know this, and I believe I can help him achieve and exceed what he thinks he is capable of. As a result of our work with Loli, we are much more settled emotionally and more in sync as a unit. Beautiful, beautiful. Testimonial 2. We have really appreciated your help and support with my dog's training issues and have seen improvements in a very short time. There was lots uncovered and that I did not know. Because of you, M has has been a lot more relaxed with other dogs and has that has that he has attacked in the past. And on walks and on the lanai, I am developing more trust that he is not going to jump over and run away. A few friends have also commented that he seems more relaxed. That is great. Great change. And the last testimonial. Wow, the feedback Loli gave us about our pup's answers to her gentle questions was beyond what I imagined. Loli led us to understand what the meaning behind some some of my dog's behaviors. She confirmed what I suspected was his perception of his job and his sole purpose. He let her know what was making him feel anxious, what gave him joy, how he felt about his feline family, and what his favorite activities and food were, and so much more. Loli was kind and never demanding that he answer and let him know he was safe with her and she would be able to communicate whatever he wanted with his humans. This led to great suggestions on how we could better ease his anxieties, understand what his barks meant, and what he was trying to communicate to us with certain behaviors he was expressing. For those of you wondering if this is real, so Loli walked me through her conversation with B. There were things he mentioned that she never could have known, things only his family knew. So many of her behavioral suggestions for us panned out, His behaviors have changed because we know we have a better understanding of his needs and his feelings. We now better, we now know better what to say, to do and assuage his anxiety and what we have been doing correctly all along. We are connecting to him and to each other in a much healthier, gentler, kinder, and more loving way. 
all because of this pup's conversation with this amazing human, Loli, who I met serendipitously a day that changed our lives in ways I can never have imagined, ways that help this combined pet and human family grow beneficially, personally, and emotionally. So beautiful. And by the way, after her session, she became an animal communicator. She went to training for animal communication because she was so inspired by it all. So that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you have a much greater understanding of the value of animal communication and behavioral issues. Book your session now. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain and may even see overnight dramatic changes as well as opening your mind, heart, spirit to your deep connection with your pets. I am available for animal communication energy healing sessions and also have two upcoming training workshops. For more information, please visit my website at animals with a dash or a hyphen in between speak.com. So it's animals dash or hyphen speak.com. Or my email, lolyjaneanimalcommunication at gmail.com, which you could also find on the website. Be sure to follow and subscribe for any special segments only available to subscribers. And join us next week on how animal communication can help with physical and health issues. As always, love and gratitude for listening to the Lowly Jane Animal Communication and Healing Podcast. Thank you.